Well, hey there, into one. Remember back in March when we called off church meeting in our building and we went to exclusively meeting at church online? Some of you might remember that. Do you remember when we all thought that things would get back to normal in what, like three weeks? Remember, remember that? And now, three weeks? Yeah, right. Maybe you were thinking that surely by August, just before school starts, that this whole season would be in our rearview mirror. And now between our temporary church home during our renovation and now with our new church online only phase, we have been like weekend travelers living out of our suitcases. We didn't really bother to unpack because we thought, well, we we are just not going to be here that long. Yeah, so that changed too. Now it's time for us to speak honestly about these changes. Being out of our weekly regular gathering in the same building at the same time has forced some of us out of some really good habits. And be honest, maybe they have been replaced by some not so good habits. So I want to suggest a couple of new habits that can help us out of the circumstances that many of us have fallen into. Habit one, I want to encourage you to establish a Sunday morning routine. Most of you used to have one. It might not have been perfect. It probably wasn't perfect, but it did help you move in a good direction. Maybe you can refine it now and get a new and better one up and running. September is here. The reset is here. I want you to start a new Sunday morning routine for you and for your family. No more just getting by with just for now thinking. This is where we are. Let's live well in it. And this routine can involve church online or church on Main Street. If you are going to engage through church online and you want to watch together with your family, then set your startup time, your, your setup time, and enjoy the service together. So what other elements can you add into your version of church online? What can you do to make it special? Clothing or costume theme days, special food events, earned premium seating. Go ahead and have some fun with it. And if possible, try to engage with each other. Each of you can ask and answer a question about something that happened or was said during the service. What did you notice? Now, if you are going to join us live and in person, then yeehaw for you and for us. Give yourself an extra couple of minutes to arrive. Make sure that the last thing you do before leaving the house is to go to the bathroom. We are going to encourage you to really limit the use of our bathrooms, even though they are beautifully brand spanking new. This prevents potential contamination spots. So I'm not sure how that works for your coffee needs then. Does, does that mean that you have to make it at home and drink it on the way? Or should you now look to stop at a drive through on the way? And, Maybe you have to drink it earlier or bring it, I don't know. Maybe you should just give up the habit entirely and never drink coffee again. I mean, that sounds like it makes the most sense to me, but that might just be a little biased. So now you've arrived at church. Approach the brand new front door, not the back door, and come from whichever way that you normally come with your mask on and sign in with one of our hosts. And if you forgot your mask, you can either purchase a reusable one or use a complimentary uh, designer mask. As you're speaking with our hosts, you will need to answer some of these standard safety questions. You are all well aware of them, so no problems, right? You next go through the open door and proceed to our next station to prepare your heart and your hands. There we have some hand sanitizer and a blessing for you so that you can get your whole self prepared for worship. 
Inside, you can keep the mask on and greet each other with the holy air high five. Move to a pew and try to stay separated from other groups by about two meters. If the bathroom requirement becomes, uh, let's say, non-negotiable, well, then you can head down the steps at the north end of the building. That's the back of the sanctuary. As you go downstairs, you may now marvel at the brand new, spacious gathering area. And in the bathrooms, brand new bathrooms, you will find some guidance for hand washing procedures and access to some disinfectant wipes for cleaning off any surfaces that you may have touched while you were there. Directions will be there to clear up any questions. There will also be song lyrics posted to aid you with your hand washing times. You're welcome! Please feel free to read along with the music during the service. It will be good to join your voices with those around you, even if singing is still a little risky. You know what? You can sing along at home though, can't you? For offering, you can use the offering box at the back of the sanctuary, or you may continue to give online through the link at Church Online, or by just maneuvering to our website. At the conclusion of the service, everyone will proceed to the southwest, a.k.a. the back door, so in the front door and out the back door. When outside, you can gather and chat under the tree or around the building, catch up with each other, okay? It's been a while. Habit number two. Establish a group or a gathering routine. This might even overlap with habit number one. Perhaps your new Sunday morning routine will be to gather with another family or another friend or two and engage in church online together. Maybe you can even work in a meal together. That would be awesome. If, the, if I was there, I would totally say that you could sing the doxology for your lunch, Grace. I love sharing that moment with you. But if you are not going to meet together at a home on Sunday mornings, you can plan to gather with our Zoom group on Thursday nights. We have a sign-up for that coming in our chat feed, and we'll give you a link for that in our email too. Sign up so that we can make sure that you get the invitation and password to join. Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. If this is a habit of yours that has been disrupted, let's fix that. If this is a habit you have not yet developed, well, let's remedy that too. I want you to take the lead on that, whether you feel like the leader or not. Invite someone, encourage someone, get yourself signed up. Geographically, it doesn't matter where you are. If we have enough interest at a different time, we can set that up also. Don't miss this opportunity to connect, in your case, maybe even for the first time. Habit number three, last habit. I want you to begin praying for your church into one every single day. I know some of you are already doing this and I want you to know how much I appreciate it, just so much. As we together take this step of studying prayer in our teaching series, I think it would be fantastic if you would pick up the challenge to pray for your church daily, along with trying out some of the new prayer ideas that will be presented to you over the next couple of weeks. I want you to be intentionally praying for our church together, and here's why. I'm concerned. I'm not concerned about our survival. I'm concerned that we may miss an unprecedented opportunity. I'm concerned that I, or that we, will be so concerned and so focused on what we can't do that we will miss out on what we can do and what we must do in this season. I want you to pray that we will see and that we will seize the unique opportunity that this season affords. And here's the thing. If God answers that prayer, when we get back to being fully open, there may just be people from Stovall and the surrounding areas. There may be people from far away from Stouffville who have joined the community of Church Online and Zoom meetings. There might be people 
who have become interested in following Jesus and going with us at Into One on this road trip in earnest pursuit of Christ in this brand new, unprecedented season. So share the links, share the contact. Maybe they will look back at 2020 and say, that is the year that I came back to faith. Or 2020? Oh, that was the wild year that I came to faith. Let's pray that we won't just sit back and wait for a reset. Let's take advantage of an upset that is releasing some unique opportunities. So here's the quick recap of new habits that I hope that we can all embrace. First, establish a Sunday morning routine for you and for your family. Two, stay in or create a new small group gathering routine. Three, pray for into one. Remember, none of us has ever done anything like this before, and we are all learning together. So let's support each other and call each other forward. If we embrace these habits, not only will we get through this, we will be better for this. More importantly, our families and our community will be better for this. I've never been more excited to partner with the Holy Spirit and to partner with, with you to see some absolutely unexpected opportunities arise in our world, but specifically at Into One. We will not just get through this and survive. Let's get through this and thrive. And as we delight in and display the love of our Savior Jesus, let's inspire some others to jump on board. Let's start some new habits and let's be on the lookout for some new opportunities. Then perhaps we will all be able to agree that what began as a great interruption for the church became greater influence and greater opportunity for the church as well. Thanks for being on mission into one. It's better when you're here. Better when we're together.